Hi, it's Dwyer, keeping it free.blogspot.com for my law firm, richarddwyer.com. Today is November the 4th, 2017. Let me also say, too, for legal reasons, a very important caveat, right? I'm not here to give investment advice. What I'm here to do is to just provide information and to tell you what I'm doing. Just understand, you need to make your own financial decisions. Now, there are many very well-meaning people with um, a legacy finance background and subscribers or constituents, right, who have been opining about cryptocurrency, and they've been giving an accurate information. One of them is Mohammed Al Aryan, right, big name, former PIMCO uh, guy, uh, former Harvard endowment guy, and he's talking about how Bitcoin is a commodity, right? Let me just make a few points here that need to be made that I believe those in the cryptocurrency space know well. Just understand that Bitcoin is not the only cryptocurrency. You actually have cryptocurrencies that can be used as a means of payment. In other words, the transaction happens almost immediately. The same time it would take you to run a credit card, for some of these cryptocurrencies, you can actually do a cryptocurrency transaction. You shouldn't view many of these cryptocurrencies, which in my opinion are viable long term, like you would view bars of gold and silver. They're not just stores of wealth. They're actually currency you can use in everyday transactions. What I want you to do is to separate out some of the altcoins from Bitcoin, right? Just compare and contrast Bitcoin Cash, which I personally believe is going to surpass Bitcoin in the long run. Just compare and contrast Bitcoin Cash, which can do transactions quickly. With Bitcoin, it would be absolutely silly to consider Bitcoin Cash to be merely a commodity when you can use it just like you would use a credit card. Also, consider PIVX. Consider Dash, my personal favorite. Right? These provide almost instantaneous transactions, and that's today. You can imagine as the infrastructure for cryptocurrency builds out even further, the instantaneous nature of a transaction with Bitcoin Cash or PIVX or Dash is going to be even faster, right? Let me also point out, too, that gold doesn't pay a dividend. Now, don't get me wrong. I own some gold myself. I'm a big believer in gold. I'm a big believer in silver. It doesn't have to be an either or to me. But just understand that you can't analogize cryptocurrency, all cryptocurrency, to gold because gold doesn't pay a dividend. As those in the crypto sphere are aware, right? If you have a proof of stake coin like PIVX, if you keep your wallet open, over time, you're going to get a dividend, right? That's the nature of proof of stake. I would encourage those of you who are new to cryptocurrency to actually Google the term. Understand there are some cryptocurrencies where you actually get a return, right? You get ROI simply for having the coin. That's in addition to capital gains. That's very different from commodities like gold and silver. Let me also point out, too, that for some proof-of-work cryptocurrencies, think Dash, if you hold enough of it where you own a master node, you're actually getting a monthly stipend. 
They're actually giving you a percentage of the profits each month. In other words, your coin doesn't even have to be proof of stake, depending on the terms and conditions of the coin and your ownership of certain percentages. You can actually get monthly payments from the coin, whether you use the coin or not. Let me also say too, with regard to Dash, right? And with regard to instantaneous transactions, I want people to research the work of Feisty, F-E-S-T-Y, right? Feisty has come up with bracelets that Dash holders can use. So when you're in a pub, you can just flash the bracelet and the vendor will actually get a payment of Dash, right? Understand that cryptocurrency is doing some things far beyond what government issued fiat currency is doing, right? Let me also say too, that right now, there are many newcomers to the market, right? The market cap of cryptocurrency now is up over $190 billion. Just understand that that's a pittance of where it's headed, right? When you have companies like Apple with a market cap of more than $900 billion, right? Just think it through. Just understand that the idea that widely used, and that's what cryptocurrency is going to be, widely used cryptocurrency, used internationally across several different sovereign nations, is going to have a cumulative market cap less than the market caps of companies like Apple or Amazon. It's simply preposterous, right? As the world trends toward cryptocurrencies, as cryptocurrencies are used in more and more transactions, it's going to quickly start surpassing the market caps of every individual country. Just like it would be absurd to think that Apple would have a market cap greater than the amount of dollars in circulation globally. It's going to be preposterous to think that Apple could have a market cap bigger than the entire market cap of the cryptoverse, right? So just understand cryptocurrency is going to continue to grow. You're not in the first inning anymore with cryptocurrency. You're more like in the third inning. Now Wall Street's getting involved. Now people like Lloyd Blankfein of Goldman Sachs are making positive statements about cryptocurrency. Right now, Mark Cuban's involved. Now, the smart money is getting involved. Just understand, when you research markets, the real uptick in any market is when the public gets involved. We're not even there yet. In other words, in the maturation of the cryptocurrency space, it's still early. It's still the first half of the game. Now, let me say, you're going to have market consolidation sooner or later. In other words, a lot of these well-meaning and perhaps not so well-meaning ICOs are going to come and fail. That's the way it always is. You remember the number of manufacturers of personal computers back in the early 1980s. That market consolidated. You no longer have many of the manufacturers that you had at the time. But just understand, just like the market for personal computing is still vibrant, right? So too will cryptocurrency still be vibrant. Maybe some of the players are going to be pruned, right? So I would argue probably 80 to 90% of the current cryptocurrencies out right now will likely go bust. <clears throat> But that doesn't mean the space, the technology behind the space, the idea of a blockchain is going to go away. So you need to pick the winners, separate the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. Let me just say, 
what I'm doing, right? Because the market, to me, hasn't fully recognized some very valuable parts of the crypto sphere, right? In my opinion, <clears throat> the cryptocurrencies that you really want to look at carefully are those that you could use as a means of payment, right? Not just to hold on to as a store of value, but as a means of payment. In other words, you go to buy a cup of coffee. The cryptocurrency you can use to do so quickly without holding up the line at Starbucks is going to be the cryptocurrency that has a leg up on the rest of the market. Right, The cryptocurrency you could use at the gas station to buy gas and to not hold up the line, to get in and get out quickly. The one that's easy for you to keep track of so you know how much is left in your wallet. The wallet has to have a certain ease of use. You have to be comfortable. Right, The easy to use, almost instantaneous cryptocurrencies, to me, are going to have a leg up on the rest of the market. So, in my opinion, you need to look at my personal favorite, Dash. You need to look at PIVX, which I've mentioned here earlier. You need to look at Bitcoin Cash. I know there's a big feud in the Bitcoin community. Just to understand that Bitcoin Cash is a cryptocurrency with a transaction time that's much faster than Bitcoin, right? With scaling possibilities that are much better than Bitcoin. At the end of the day, convenience, speed, they're going to matter to the consumer, right? Right now, the consumer is a bit overwhelmed. There's so many new terms to learn. There's so many cryptocurrencies to figure out. Just to understand in terms of speed, convenience, ease of use, Dash, PIVX, Bitcoin Cash, you need to keep an eye on them. Let's talk about another group of cryptocurrencies that I feel the market will reward. And those are the cryptocurrencies that provide for privacy, right? There are many areas of the economy, gambling, marijuana, pornography, right? These are huge areas. People participate in these areas today, right? The cryptocurrencies that enable you to have privacy, that don't leave your name and information on the blockchain, that don't allow a forensic accountant to come back and say, you know what, this guy visited these places and gambled on these days, right? He visited these recreational marijuana uh, pot clubs on these days and spent this amount. Right? The cryptocurrencies that provide you with privacy are going to be rewarded. So right now, in my opinion, in a world where many of these cryptocurrencies are being overlooked, you need to look at them and realize they're offering more. They're offering something for which there's already a vibrant market that many of these similarly priced in terms of market cap, cryptocurrencies can't match. So in addition to Dash, which gives you greater privacy than Bitcoin, PIVX, which has now adopted zero coin protocol. You should also take a hard look, in my opinion, at Zcash, right? And Zencash. Let me point out, I know the Zencash people know this, but it's not written in too many places. Zencash has been on fire of late. <clears throat> it's now in the top 100, right? It's coming from way outside the top 100. <clears throat> it's now in the top 100 of cryptocurrencies in terms of market cap. 
Zencash even gives you the ability to send messages confidentially. Right? You're able to use the blockchain to send confidential messages that they can't trace back to you. Right? In my opinion, as a consumer of cryptocurrency, I'm just telling you what I like to do. You're going to have to decide for yourself what you want to do. I like the cryptocurrencies that I can use as a means of payment. In other words, they're quick, they're convenient, they're cheap. Right. In terms of what it costs to do a transaction versus Bitcoin. So I like Bitcoin Dash. I like, excuse me, Bitcoin Cash. I like Dash. I like PIVX. I also like the cryptocurrencies that provide privacy. Zcash, Dash, PIVX, Zencash, Monero. Right. Those are the ones that have caught my eye. Right. For a third group. Of cryptocurrencies. I know people are very excited about Ethereum, right? I'm invested in Ethereum. My point to you, though, as you consider investing in Ethereum as a way to use smart contracts, right? Just understand Ethereum is much more expensive than the coin that split off from Ethereum's blockchain, Ethereum Classic, right? Which right now is going for about $11 a coin versus the $300 plus dollars a coin for Ethereum, right? The platforms that allow for smart contracts that you feel are gonna take off, right? Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, NEO, which is huge in Asia, right? Let's even include EOS, right? Dan Larimer, who helped put up Steemit, is the architect behind, or at least one of the architects behind EOS, which some believe has greater potential than Ethereum. Understand EOS is still in its nascent stage, Right, the coin won't fully be online for several months, but these platforms on which you can use smart contracts should also, in my opinion, get prioritized over some of these other cryptocurrencies. Right, so just keep an eye out for cryptos you can use as a means of payment quickly, cheaply. Conveniently, cryptocurrencies that give you a level of privacy and cryptocurrencies on which you can build, right? Smart contract platforms. Those are the ones I like. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.